Good morning. Bom dia. Continuing the scientific program of Secondo Silsen, I am honored to mediate the number three round table that will discuss about the recent activities influenced by Japanese lesson study from two different perspectives, such as mathematics curriculum reform in Japan and the international cooperation and math education with a lesson study approach. Continuando a programação do segundo Silsen, tenho a honra de mediar a mesa redonda número 3, que discutirá sobre atividades recentes sobre influência da lesson study japonesa, sobre duas perspectivas distintas, como a reforma curricular em matemática no Japão e a cooperação internacional em educação matemática, com abordagem pela lesson study. To contribute to the panel, the first speaker is Professor Yoshinori Shimizu. He is PhD in mathematics education and works at the Faculty of Human Sciences, University of Tsukuba, one of the major research institutions in Japan. He was a consultant of the first 1995 Teams videotape classroom study. Also, he was a member of a mathematics expert group for OECD PISA in 2003, 2006, and 2009. He is one of the three founders of a learner's perspective study with David Clark and Christina Keitel. That is a 16 countries cooperative study on mathematics classrooms and has been the Japanese team leader of the project. He was a co-chair of ICMI Study 24, School Mathematics Curriculum Reforms, Challenges, Changes and Opportunities. He is the president of the Japan Society of Mathematical Education since 2020 and now in his second term. He served as the chair of the Committee for the National Curriculum Guideline for Elementary Mathematics in Japan. He has published books and journal articles internationally. Last year, he served as one of the guest editors for the special issue of ZDM Mathematics Education Understanding Complexity in the Mathematics Classroom, in memoriam David Clark. The special issue includes his paper on the analysis of a teacher's reflection during lesson study cycles. Professor Yoshinori Shimizu tem doutorado em Educação Matemática e é professor titular na Faculdade de Ciências Humanas na Universidade de Tsukuba, uma das maiores instituições de pesquisa no Japão. Ele foi consultor do primeiro estudo dos vídeos Teams em 1995, tendo sido também membro do grupo de especialistas da OECD PISA em 2003, 2006 e 2019, 2009. Ele é um dos membros fundadores do grupo Learners Perspective Study com David Clark e Christine Keitel, que realiza estudos comparativos de salas de aula de matemática de 16 países e tem sido líder da equipe japonesa. Ele foi coordenador do ICMISTA de 24 sobre a reforma curricular de matemática. Ele é presidente da Sociedade Japonesa de Educação Matemática desde 2020, exercendo no momento o segundo mandato. Ele foi coordenador do Comitê para Parâmetros Curriculares Nacionais de Matemática Fundamental no Japão. E ele tem publicado livros e artigos internacionalmente. No ano passado, ele serviu como um dos editores convidados para o um número especial do ZDM em Mathematics Education, Understanding Complexity in the Mathematics Classrooms, in memoriam David Clark. Este número incluiu seu artigo sobre a análise das reflexões dos professores durante os ciclos de lesson study. For our second guest speaker is Professor Takuya Bala. He is professor, his doctor PhD in education and is professor since 2010 and vice dean of graduate school and humanities and social sciences at Hiroshima University since April 2020. His area of specialization is mathematics education and international cooperation in educational development. He has been developed, involved in international cooperation projects such as PISA, TALIS, Rexon, besides the JICA projects in Bangladesh and Zambia. 
he has been affiliated in many academic societies and served previously as president of the Japan Society of African Education, vice president of the Japan Academic Associations of Mathematics Education. Nosso segundo convidado é o professor Takuya Baba. Ele é doutor em educação e é professor titular da Universidade de Hiroshima desde 2010 e é pró-reitor de pós-graduação em Ciências Humanas e Sociais da mesma universidade desde 2020. Sua área de especialização é Educação Matemática e Cooperação Internacional em Desenvolvimento Educacional. Ele teve envolvimento em projetos de cooperações internacionais, como PISA, Thales, Rexham, além de projetos da JAICA, que é a Agência de Cooperação Internacional do Japão, em Bangladesh e Zâmbia. Ele é associado de várias sociedades acadêmicas, tendo sido presidente da Sociedade Japonesa de Educação Africana, vice-presidente da Associação Acadêmica Japonesa de Educação Matemática. Tem várias publicações de artigos, livros e palestras proferidas sobre aprendizado da matemática e resolução de problemas com abordagem da lesson study. So now, let us welcome o professor Shimizu for his talk. Seja bem-vindo, Shimizu Sensei. Thank you very much, uh, Yuriko Sensei, uh, for your very kind introduction. Uh, good morning and hello and uh, good evening for everyone uh, here. And my name is Yoshinori Shimizu. Uh, it is my uh, great pleasure to be uh, invited here and uh, to share uh, some story of Japanese recent study with you. Um, I would like to uh, share what is going on right now inside in Japan in relation to lesson study. So the title includes a state of the art of Japanese lesson study. And the, my focus would be uh, the uh, teachers coping with the revision of national curriculum guideline. Uh, this is the outline. Uh, Starting with the uh, Japanese context very quickly, uh, the, as a background of my talk, COVID-19 and the Giga Schools policy and so on, so on and then uh, National Curriculum Guideline, a new one, which is uh, started from 2020. And uh, I like to mention uh, uh, to a uh, tradition of lesson study in our country. And then uh, I would like to share some uh, cases of lesson study, uh, which includes the one run by a Japan Society of Mass Education, uh, kinds of nationwide events of lesson study. And also uh, we say Kounai Kenshu, which is a intra-school professional development through uh, lesson study, at uh, typically public elementary schools or junior high schools. And then, uh, I like to just uh, reflecting on the role of lesson study, not only for the professional development, but also uh, the role for alignment, the curriculum I will uh, discuss later. And then finally, uh, I like to make a matome. Matome in Japanese uh, means summing up what I will share today, some issues and the challenges. So uh, this is a topic of Japanese context background. Of course, uh, as other countries, our uh, teachers are coping with the COVID-19 pandemic, which suddenly happened in 2020. Uh, March, April, school was locked down suddenly. And then quite recently, uh, government has changed the policy. And uh, since last year, uh, the school has been open uh, for the regular classroom at the, not only at school but the, at the university and so on so on but uh, i would like not to talk much about this and the second point is we say giga school policy uh, which is uh, introduction of uh, um, ict device for each one 
students to use in the classroom. The, this is a, a top-down government decision making, and they, I will uh, refer quickly. And then uh, teachers' heavy workload, which means Japanese teacher looks very busy compared to uh, other countries. I would like to share some statistics. And the uh, next topic was the uh, National Curriculum Guideline, a new one. Uh, I'd like to share quickly also. And then a tradition of lesson study will be shared. So uh, this is a, a Giga Schools plan, uh, which is uh, Minister of Education uh, the public uh, in 2019, December, uh, global and innovative gateway for all, which includes um, just uh, uh, enhancing high speed internet environment for all the schools in, in the country and a single student can have ICT device in the classroom, which has cost a lot. But our government has decided to do this uh, particular plan, uh, partly because of the COVID-19 afterwards. And by 2021, almost all the uh, students did have uh, one uh, laptops or notebooks uh, so in classroom. Uh, this means teachers are busy for coping with these new facilities or new policies in the classroom. And the students are enjoying, but some teachers will have some difficulties. And then uh, I'd like to share some statistics from OECD TALIS, which was done uh, 28, 13, 18. Uh, some of you may uh, familiar with this, Teaching and Learning International Survey, identifies uh, what the teacher's working environment is all about, or what the teacher's belief about and attitude toward teaching and so on and so on. We have a very uh, interesting data from this particular study. And uh, this is a, from uh, TARIS 2013 and the, the kinds of average around the world the teachers and uh, participate in the study was something like 43 years old on average and they uh, 16 years of teaching experience and they 24 with student for teaching and they spent average of 38 hours per week working but um, as a uh, the last line says um, the teachers working time uh, uh, different among countries, tw 29 in Chile and Italy and uh, 45 in Japan. Uh, it's quite a lot. Um, and the uh, Japanese government was shocked with this data and the uh, government has decided to reduce the wor their working hours. And uh, this is a uh, data of country by country and the country, but they, this is too small. So I just extracted uh, Brazil and Japan here. Uh, teachers in Brazil spent uh, 38 hours a week, which means roughly uh, seven, uh, six, seven hours a week, uh, a day. Uh, in, on the other hand, Japanese teachers spent 54 hours a week, which means more than 10 hours a day, a uh, huge amount of my uh, time uh, Japanese teachers spend in school. And the interesting thing would be the Brazilian teachers spent roughly two thirds for uh, teaching, uh, hours spent on teaching are two thirds, but for Japanese teachers, time for teaching is only one third of the entire hour in school. And they are doing many administrative work and the student uh, discipline and uh, uh, maybe uh, some club activities and so on so on. So in, in some uh, Japanese teachers are very uh, demanding and busy time spending time in their school, but 
still they do uh, less study as a uh, basic practice for, in particular for elementary school or junior high school. And uh, uh, another background would be uh, recent curriculum reform in Japan. Um, in 2017, new national curriculum standards guideline has been released, and uh, which is implemented from 2020 at the elementary school, and then annual progress by school level has happened. And a huge difference is would be uh, from content focused to competency-based curriculum. This is a big deal. And uh, particular emphasis on the role of mathematical perspective thinking and the expected to function in learning mathematics. So, and the, another focus is the, um, the importance of mathematical activity in, a, in daily life uh, or in mathematical context as a basic process of teaching learning. This is a, a simple uh, sentences, but the, this has a huge uh, influence on the textbooks and the classroom teachings and the teacher's view on the school subject of mathematics. So uh, right now, um, many uh, in many schools, most schools, uh, teachers are struggling with this new idea, what should we teach students uh, in new national curriculum guideline, maybe which uh, can be done with ICT or um, some other digital textbook and so on and so on. So uh, changing educational policy did, does matter to teachers' daily life. And uh, this is from uh, Tim's model of a curriculum uh, layer. We have a three different curriculum uh, category, intended curriculum, which is a, a national curriculum guideline and the implemented curriculum will be a teaching in classroom, student experience in a classroom. And then attained curriculum is a student achievement and attitude. Um, Tim's model differentiate these three layer. And they, in the case of Japan, we have a new national curriculum guideline as an intended curriculum. And now new textbooks comes to the classroom and the teachers are struggling with news, using a new one and the implemented curriculum is going on. And now student is just a changing. So uh, in relation to the lesson study, this is a key. We, have, we are in the transition period of the uh, new national curriculum. So, and the uh, uh, textbook and the resources has a key influence. Uh, Tim says this is a potentially implemented curriculum, something in between intended and implemented curriculum. So uh, teachers need to interpret new textbook to teach. And sometimes some addition or arrangement of textbook are needed in, in, in the light of new goal specified in uh, national curriculum. And uh, uh, in this background, uh, lesson study is going ongoing in our country. Uh, and uh, as you might be familiar with this, uh, lesson study includes several phases, um, planning lesson with a theme of a school, uh, fostering mathematical literacy or pro ability of problem solving or so on and so on. And uh, implementing the research lesson observed by other teachers, reflecting and discussing on the lesson just observed. And afterwards, the lesson plan will be revised for the next lesson. And also this cycle will be repeated uh, within an extended time. Uh, with the, this basic idea, I would like to share some other uh, thing. And they, there's a famous paper written by uh, Catherine Lewis and uh, Ineko Tsuchida in 1990. The lesson study is like a uh, swiftly uh, flowing the river, uh, which describe uh, lesson study has many faces, um, enhancing teachers' professional development for 
pre-service teachers and the beginning teachers and the experienced teachers. Uh, in addition to the uh, these professional development aspect, um, this study have a specific impact on maintaining cooperation among teachers or uh, sharing new idea about teaching and the testing, demonstrating a new approach. And in addition to that, today I like to uh, emphasize the uh, checking and uh, testing a new approach to the new curriculum guideline. This is a uh, currently happening in Japan. So uh, this study is not only for the professional development, but they used for curriculum uh, development and curriculum implementation, and maybe for the next curriculum development. Um, uh, and I, I'd like to share some recent cases. Um, first two would be uh, relatively uh, large scale, elementary school level, and Japan Society of Mass Education uh, having uh, th this event uh, once a year, in, maybe in February or March. Uh, and uh, I, I'd like to share the most recent one. And another example is Konai Kenshu. Uh, each single school have an uh, intra-school lesson study for uh, their own purpose, own theme. Uh, this is uh, uh, what JSME has conducted um, August 23rd and 2017, uh, five, more than five years ago. This this year, the Minister of Education has just released new curriculum guideline, which will be implemented 2020. But the teachers have started to uh, examine and uh, checking the content, and the competency-based curriculum has been uh, just a focus. And the teachers' role in the classroom will be changed, or so on, so on. And uh, this year, in March 21st. We have uh, another uh, lesson study uh, meeting with, among teachers on site. Uh, this was for the first time uh, of three years. Oh, we have an online meeting for the past time, but uh, this year we have an on site lesson study again in March. And they, the topic was competency for uh, thinking mathematically. How can we foster student competencies for? thinking mathematically, and uh, how we could activate or uh, introduce mathematical activity in the classroom, and uh, how we could use the assessment for improving teaching, and so on and so on. These three issues are very big one in the new national curriculum guideline, and the uh, teachers around the country are struggling with this uh, new topic to be uh, tackled with. And, uh, this is a second uh, uh, example of a junior high level of a Japan Society of Mathematics Education uh, done. Um, for the junior high school level, uh, topic will be uh, just focused on geometry, mathematical activity in geometry, how we could introduce uh, at mathematical activity, which is emphasized in a new national curriculum guideline. So uh, this was online event that they roughly 200 teachers joined uh, online and discussed and observed lesson that discussed and what is going on the, within a new curriculum guideline. So this uh, example uh, just a uh, symbolically uh, tell us the when new national curriculum guideline has been devised and they implemented uh, teachers started to uh, check and the test and they just they try to use new materials for teaching and so on. So on. And uh, uh, this, oops, oh, uh, I just uh, missed the uh, photo from the Kone Kinshu. Uh, I, I have a, uh, so many examples of this uh, because of the uh, 
national curriculum guideline has been changed from content-based to competency-based. I was about to uh, use the case of fifth grade of uh, teaching speed. Uh, the teacher, uh, Ms. Holly, was trying to introduce mathematical activity uh, from the real videotape of uh, learning. Teachers are just learning and they how can we say which teacher will be uh, most fast and so on, so on. So classroom started to discuss the uh, video image and the, then mathematical activity cycle started and they formulate some uh, mathematical uh, index for checking uh, speed with uh, distance and the time or time vast distance or division of those and so on, so on. So I just uh, tried to put the photo of the, the lesson, but uh, it's missed here. And uh, the among the examples, core of the lesson studies, we say Kyozai Kenkyu, which is a research on teaching materials and they, which usually includes uh, explicit, being explicit with a goal. And this is a case for new national curriculum guidelines. The goal has been changed and the teachers should be very aware of the goal, competency-based uh, curriculum for introduce, introducing this. And they uh, examining task. Of course, te te teaching with textbook, uh, textbook includes a task but uh, they need some uh, modification of a task suitable to my student, or maybe adding some additional task and so on, so on. And so this uh, core uh, lesson study, Kyozai uh, Kenkyu, uh, is a key for the teacher to uh, tackle with. And uh, we have uh, conducted some uh, analysis of a new national, uh, new te textbook, which is aligned with a uh, uh, new uh, curriculum guideline. And we found um, textbooks has some limitations, of course, uh, regarding the inclusion of mathematical tasks. Um, textbook cannot have uh, all the phase of mathematical activities, in particular, the first phase of activity, which means uh, uh, daily life event can be uh, just put into the mathematical world. This is a very uh, difficult part. And the teachers uh, try to find suitable example for teaching and so on. So this is a... Uh, uh, kinds of limitation and shortage of textbook. And they, as a underlined, the result suggests that teachers need to supplement tasks and activities that are not explicitly provided in the textbook for achieving the new competency-oriented goal intended by the national curriculum standard. So uh, this is a one, uh, one of the key issue for the current lesson study in Japan. Uh, the um, how to align the intended curriculum and implemented curriculum. Uh, I, I, finally, I just like to sh shortly uh, share some idea, uh, key pedagogical term by Japanese teachers. I, I previously I have a, uh, analyzed this Hatsumon uh, Kikan Shido, which is a everything is in Japanese and a bunch of board writing. But they, uh, today, because of the time, I will skip some of them and just uh, pick up some. Uh, some. This is a, a bunch of board writing for lesson planning. They, recent years, uh, teachers, both uh, beginning and the experience, use the board writing for planning lesson. Previously, board writing is a, just a, a target of afterwards examining what lesson was all about and the lesson proceeded uh, in a way, a good way or a bad way and so on and so on. But uh, for the planning lesson, Japanese teacher uh, uh, using board writing before a lesson uh, without a student. So this is one of the trends. And a matome, uh, which is a, a 
summarizing, summing up, but the uh, teachers think that this stage is very critical, indispensable one to any successful lesson. And then at this stage, uh, teachers invite students to reflect on and the role of mathematical perspective and thinking, which is uh, emphasized in new national curriculum guideline. And the teachers carefully make a final careful comment on student work in relation to mathematical sophistication. The new national textbooks, new one, uh, just illustrate what was key, what was important for this unit or for this subunit in relation to mathematical perspective and thinking. So this is a, uh, another topic. And they, uh, researchers who uh, often invited, myself sometimes invited by the school teachers as principal to have a uh, some comment or suggestion for uh, from a broader perspective. But uh, um, given the tradition of lesson study, uh, the third point, uh, Mass educator like me are often challenged by the school teachers whether uh, research results provided by research are useful for improving classroom practice or not. And also, uh, classroom teachers just uh, request what is the concrete meaning of a new national curriculum guideline in the classroom? and so on. So we are uh, supposed to share some idea with a new national curriculum guideline. And then uh, this is a concluding remarks for my talk. Matome, uh, we say matome, the final phase. Uh, lesson study provides an opportunity not only for the professional development of teachers, but also for the alignment of curriculum at the uh, transition period of the new national curriculum. This is uh, what is going on in Japan. So uh, lesson study is not just for the professional development, but lesson study has several phases of uh, in relation to curriculum change and curriculum modification, alignment of curriculum. This is what I would like to emphasize today. And the use of new textbook, which is aligned with a new national curriculum guideline, demands teachers to interpret, examine competencies to be fostered in part particular this. In today's lesson, uh, what student gain competence or not only one lesson, but within the sequence of lesson, uh, teacher's view is important for the uh, clarify the what is mathematical competencies student uh, do to uh, just gain. And the researchers, uh, outside experts, are invited and expected to make explicit comments and suggestions related to the new national curriculum. This is a kind of tough part. So um, that's my uh, talk. Muchas gracias is Spanish, but uh, <laughs> thank you very much. Um, it's I think it's time, yes. Thank you so much, Professor Shimiz. I think that the, this talk was very uh, contemporary issue that the, all the, the countries and the participants of this, this seminar is facing. It's a real challenge, the alignment of the curriculum uh, as a part of a lesson study tradition. So thank you very much. And uh, we will wait for the, the questions coming from the audience and then we return to the subject. Uh, eu acho que esse assunto foi excelente para uh, os problemas que nós estamos enfrentando com o advento, pelo menos no Brasil, da, da BNCC e novo currículo, implementação, alinhamento com o currículo. Eu acho que foi uma conferência assim, muito preciosa. Now, let us welcome o professor Takuya Baba to talk about the international cooperation aspect of lesson study activities. So, welcome. Professor Takuya Baba. Bem-vindo, Professor Baba. How can I start no. the... I, yes. Ah. Okay. Um, good morning or good afternoon, good evening, depending upon where you are. My name is Takuya. 
I'm very happy、uh, to make a presentation in this good occasion. I thank you,、uh, Dr. Yuriko Yamamoto, for inviting me to make a presentation. Besides, I have another reason. My PhD work is ethnomathematics. Which is very famous,、uh, Brazilian Professor Dan Blosio. So I'm happy to talk to the Brazilian、um, uh, audience. So let me start my talk.、Um, although I'm from Hiroshima, Japan,、uh, I'm not talking about Japanese mathematics education, rather, a、uh, context of international cooperation. I have been working. Uh, with Asian African countries throughout my careers. So, how lesson study approach can make an impact in different countries, especially on the teacher training.、Uh, summary I have already distributed,、uh, so I suppose you have read this one, but、uh, in my presentation, lesson study doesn't necessarily mean. Uh, very narrowly, the lesson study practice alone, but rather a little bit too wide away,、uh, seeing lesson in relation with children and mathematics. So, here is content of my presentation. So, let me start.、Uh, in order to explain the、uh, international cooperation context, I have to explain a little bit. Uh, World Conference on Education for All in 1990、uh, was held in Thailand、uh, by World Bank, UNESCO, UNICEF, those international organizations. And they said、uh, at, the, you know, at that time, more than 100 million children were out of schools. And we got shocked. We have to alleviate that situation. So, bring those out of school children back to schools is one of the most important p o i n t But that is not the end.、Uh, we really have to ensure、uh, what they learn in、uh, schools. So, in that sense,、uh, international cooperation、uh, t r y to assist to improve the quality of education.、Um, however, basic education is very basic in content. So, we are worried about uh, uh, being involved in such kind of basic education at the beginning. But Japan is expected to play a role. And among all areas,、uh, mathematics and science education is chosen as a priority area because uh, uh, Japanese, you know,、uh, um, we, ex- we play a good score. Um, in international assessment, besides mathematics and science,、uh, is expected to contribute to economic development. So that's how we started. This is a, a bit of statistics how much education project、uh, initiated, especially in Africa. About、uh, 40 of them are being conducted since、uh, 1995. So in 1990s, Only three of them, but、uh, gradually increase in number and、uh, different countries are being involved. And one of the most,、uh, the very first one is called SMASE, which happened in Kenya. And in fact, I was the founder member of Kenyan SMASE project, so I know very well about the、uh, Kenyan SMASE project. Uh, considering improvement of education qualities, of course, teacher play an important role. And in order to improve the、uh, quality of teachers or teaching, teacher training is very important. But at that time in Kenya or Africa, teacher training was sporadic. When there is money, there is teacher training, but there is no systematic training. So when we started SMAS project, we tried to establish The systematic training system. That was a major aim of the、uh, project.、Um, at, when we started, this was the result of national examination. E is worst, so E is actually fail. And most majority of them, after 12, 12 years of education, when they take the national exam, examination, majority of them failed. So, we questioned to the participant of the training,、uh, training after we teach the student 12 years. This is the result. 
as a professional, how can we alleviate or address this situation? That was very fast, you know, uh, stage of our project. And this is another uh, research done or interview uh, questionnaire done. And in, we asked the student, important factor in mathematics class, what is it? And the majority of the students say formula. So this one implies uh, the classroom try to give the formula and putting the values and doing the calculation. So that kind, that type of education was quite prevalent um, along the countries. So we set up two slogans for in-service training. One is ASE, uh, sorry, ASEI, activity-based student-centered learning and experiment and improvisation. Because not only mathematics, but science is also a part. Experiment and improvisation is related to that. And the plan to see uh, improve is a sort of cycles, which you know connotes uh, the you know um, involvement of lesson study. So in order to realize activity-based student-centered learning, that's the beginning of this insert uh, in service teacher training. In fact, uh, I do still remember uh, during the first inset, we invited Professor Noda from Tsukuba University. He talked about open the approach and uh, uh, really uh, were received by the uh, participants. In order to reach, because we are going to set up the world uh, nationwide uh, system, we need to have uh, separate different levels of in-service training at the national level, district level, and cluster levels. So when we conducted the uh, national level inset, uh, district, district level trainees, uh, trainers are being invited in the national levels. And they do conduct in-service training at the district levels cluster representative uh, being invited at the district levels. In that way, we try to give the information from national levels to the cluster levels. And this was necessary in order to reach big number of the schools and teachers. The development of uh, SMASE project, budgetary, professionally, institutionally, this system was well established, I can say, for the budget. It's a part of uh, a part of tuition fee was secured for SMAS's uh, fund. Even the budget was included in the national budget. So in that sense, budgetary, it became uh, sort of sustainable. At the same time, they set up a professional institution or they set up some rules. So. Uh, SMASA project, when we started in 1998, after five years, it was very successful, well received, and uh, it was only targeting at uh, some pi uh, pilot district. So in second phase, it was spilled, spread across the whole country. And the third phase, it reaches primary education as well as other African countries because other African countries show their interests and we won't also have the similar kind of training system. So in that sense, this was well received and really spread across the country and even across the different countries in, on the African continent. Um, we also had a bit of a lesson study approach but also, as you can see, JICA supported the project across Africa, Asia, even South American continent. Um, we can see some of the project included lesson study uploads. Now, uh, I said sort of success. It spread over many uh, across the country and also different uh, countries. But this connotes change of perspective, not just simply conducting the lesson study, but 
it requires certain kind of change of how we can view the lessons. And um, I would like to talk about that difficulty which we encounter. Actually, I would call this one is really a paradigm shift from the lecture uh, to trainees. Uh, when we started uh, uh, this project, approach to teacher education is lecture give the knowledge, skills to the trainees. While against that, we try to change from lecture method to activity discussion method, more participatory approach from teaching more focused on learning, from uh, product or correct answer to more thinking process. This kind of things, it's easy to say, but difficult to realize. And that is really the one wh uh, why uh, I'm calling this is a paradigm shift. However, this approach was ambiguous for many of the peoples they are not quite sure what to see and how to see. When we are talking about you know, paying attention to the learners, paying attention to the activities, it, be, you know, it looks very active, but active doesn't necessarily mean mathematically active. So in that sense, it is important for us to you know, have a good vision, perspective, what to see and how to see. That is why in order to overcome this kind of uh, project, we produce checklist. So whether there is a group work, whether there is a worksheet, so they put a check, uh, checklist. This checklist automates or unprofessionalize the activities. Teachers simply checking the checklist and further than that, they don't think. Well, another point which we encounter is when they say a new keyword, something like child-centered or activity-based, they feel satisfied and they don't further, you know, consider further than that. And that was a difficulties. So efforts to overcome difficulties, we did, you know, various uh, kind of efforts, like collective learning. Uh, we say, you know, lesson study is a sort of, you know, collegial relationship. There is a very famous uh, proverb in Japan, if there are three uh, people gather, wisdom of manjuri, uh, manjushuri. Um, anyway, getting together means power in a sense. So in that sense, community of practice, maybe you are aware of that, becomes very popular. But simply gathering doesn't really ensure the deepening of mathematics learning. So again, the teachers are not sure what to discuss. And they develop once again what to discuss or develop some checklist. So in that sense, collective learning alone is not enough. So maybe we need a you know, leader who can guide that collective learning. Like Professor Takahashi talking about knowledgeable others. Yes, if we have those ones, it's important they may guide. We need a local professional leader who knows a local context as well as mathematics education. In fact, in my experience in Zambia, they form KK team or Bangladesh master teacher train, trainers, and they themselves knows better than, of course, the other ordinary teachers. But they should learn also, and they reflect continuously. Otherwise, they simply develop manuals, give the training using those manuals, and stop there. So in that sense, there is no dynamism to improving uh, quality of teaching and learning or reflection. Teachers' professional knowledge. Sometimes we approach teachers' professional knowledge talking about uh, MKT, mathematical knowledge for teaching, or PCK, pedagogical content knowledge, or knowledge emergence. It is crucial to understand local context and create solution based on that. This is very true, but brings us to the first, thing, uh, first point. So checklist doesn't solve really anything. 
teachers should continue learning. So lesson study approach, which I'm calling to change the perspective in the lesson, to overcome conflict between institution and professional autonomy. Here, what I'm calling institution is like a checklist or manuals in order to reach top down, uh, to spill over the kind of message. Sometimes we need some kind of system so that we can, you know, uh, spread those information to the, you know, uh, across the country. So I made this kind of comparison, institution focused approach left side, lesson study approach on the right side. In order to reach as many teachers as possible, uh, institution focused approach sometimes necessary, top down policy or developing some kind of manuals, try to follow that. That brings stability or uniformity. Yes, that is to a certain extent important, but I would rather think lesson study approach, especially school-based. Teacher really plays an important role and they work together collaboratively in the school levels and they try to creative be a creative or flexible, try to find their solution by themselves. And that is really important as a professional group or professional autonomy. So I'm calling, I'm proposing these ideas of endogenous development usually, local professional meets over the lesson or lesson study and make trial and errors and discuss the effect. Through such kind of experience, the teachers or teacher leaders acquire perspective and um, sense of problem and ability of thinking how to solve the problem, even develop a new way. This final slide is a little effort which we are doing in uh, Zambia. Uh, we develop a kind of assessment tasks, diagnostic take assessment task and arranging the bottom uh, bottle top uh, in 20s. Um, the right side, it seems there is no really organized uh, things. While right side, uh, left side, you can see this uh, girl is arranging the bottle top in neat way. So I, I think um, in that way, we assess the left side is level four. By giving this kind of assessment task, we try to assess the children. At the same time, uh, we are trying to develop some kind of intervention uh, tools based on the result of this. And through that, we have a lot of professional discussion. So how we can see children, how we can see their mathematical thinking, that is really uh, lesson study approach. Although this is not really lesson study approach in a narrow sense, but for us, this is uh, actually lesson study approach, which we can say. So thank you very much. Now, World Leader is uh, gathering in Hiroshima and probably you can uh, be welcome to Hiroshima when uh, COVID is over. So thank you very much for this opportunity. And uh, I welcome a uh, question and answer. Thank you. Thank you so much, Professor Baba. I think that your wonderful experience is uh, very much the things that many of our teachers in Brazil face because Brazil is a huge continental sized country with very different contexts of the social differences, gaps, and the rural uh, region and the urban cities. So the context, and we are facing the, uh, the need to align to the top-down uh, documents. Still, we have to struggle with the local context. So your talk was very, very good. So I start with uh, some questions. Because um, uh, the questions were not coming, I will start with uh, some observation that I made from the Yoshinori Sensei first. Uh, 
uh, we will wait for Takuya Sensei questions. So I ask to Yoshinori Sensei three questions. What is the level of the participation of teachers in new teaching materials for GIGA project? And what teachers are saying about the lessons and activities in the implementations of a new curriculum in Japan? And how is the assessment going on to align with implemented curriculum? Because there are, there are three key questions that we are facing now in mathematics education in Brazil. Eu estou perguntando para o professor Yoshinori qual é o nível de participação dos professores no Japão na elaboração desses novos materiais diante dessa introdução da tecnologia, né? do Giga Project que ele explicou. E o que os professores estão falando sobre as mudanças de lesson study na implementação desse novo currículo no Japão, que eles estão com um novo currículo partindo de 2020. E como é feita a, a avaliação da aprendizagem para alinhar, que esteja alinhada com a, o currículo implementado? Essa é uma questão que eu tenho muito interesse, porque nós estamos trabalhando com essas dúvidas dos professores. Please, Dr. Yoshinori, could you please uh, explain to us some of these questions? Por favor, coloca o professor Yoshinori no, 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 na tela, por favor. Hear me? Or, oh, oh, thank you. Um, the uh, three questions, uh, each of them are very nice questions, I think, and I need to think about <laughs> very key questions. Uh, for the first one, uh, Giga School policy is a uh, not a simple project. This is a nationwide uh, educational uh, initiatives. So as I mentioned, until uh, 2021, almost 97% of uh, school could provide uh, device, information device like a laptop uh, to the uh, student. Uh, so the um, Ministry of Education and uh, each board of study in each prefecture uh, eager to uh, uh, promote the uh, what to do next. Most important thing for using ICT in any school subject could be a specific um, optimization of student learning. Uh, if we could have a, a adaptive uh, task providing system, student could be uh, uh, just a follow up uh, for uh, their errors or the mistake for the next task and so in mathematics, or uh, we could use uh, movies or sounds uh, in addition to the textbook in the classroom and so on. So, on. so uh, participation of teachers uh, uh, in, in a sense, uh, necessary. But some teachers who are not familiar with the ICT device, uh, they just uh, uh, have an anxious or fear yes. <laughs> in some cases. So um, um, principal of each teacher, t uh, each school uh, struggling with uh, uh, designate some capable <laughs> capable teacher who will be leading as a group of teachers to introduce. And uh, we have a YouTube for the explanation of a, what Giga School is aim or some uh, good um, example uh, for this using uh, ICT in the classroom. And I have a, last, last year I have a, participate in a lesson study of using ICT in statistics uh, at the grade three, but the teachers were too busy to handle with each student send some uh, data table for them. And uh, teachers were just uh, struggling with not mathematics, but the ICT, <laughs> it could be happening. So uh, at this phase, uh, many teachers are struggling with but they have to participate, have to cope with. And this is a current status, I think. 
And yes. the next question, uh, can I go to the next question or? Yes, I, I'd like to, to, to summarize that oh, okay. there are the two aspects. The yes. use of teaching materials with ICT mm -hmm. because the Ministry of Education provided all the schools. Yeah. But then the role of teachers in developing new materials using the ICT, this is the completely different dimension yeah. that I want to stress because yeah. this is a very good issue to us yeah. researchers and educa educators to take mm. into account because the teachers, they are overwhelmed with the use of ICT yeah. first and to provide the uh, the learning of materials to students, not the content itself. So it's a very delicate separation yes. between the, 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 the dimensions. Yeah. This is what okay. I want to say. I, I will only just say something to audience in Portuguese to go move on because we'd like to see about something, your words about the assessment and uh, the implementation of a new curriculum. Eu estava yeah. dizendo para o professor Shimizu que realmente mesmo no Japão, eu perguntei sobre a participação dos professores em desenvolvimento de materiais de ensino, né? material pedagógico que nós também recebemos como livro didático, material pedagógico. E ele falou que no Japão também é novidade para os professores trabalhar com esse material. Então existe a dimensão de eles dominarem a linguagem de comunicação do uso da tecnologia para fazer com que as crianças também aprendam o acesso a esse material que está na mão deles, em vez de dar maior importância para o conteúdo que precisa ser desenvolvido com aquele uh, uh, material de ensino. Então é um desafio que todos nós, mesmo no Japão, eles estão enfrentando com esse novo currículo. Uh, please. Uh, Professor Yoshinori. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I just wanted to add to the first question and the teaching materials came late, but the Minister of Education has a, uh, introduced a guideline for the digital textbooks and the new uh, textbook. Uh, we have a, in March, the TV news, new mm -hmm. textbooks for all the subjects do have a two-dimensional code. We say a QR code to you, you, students can use the uh, their device to read the code and jump to the website or jump to somewhere. Textbook company are preparing materials so teacher can use that soon. But uh, I think it, there was a time lag. <laughs> yeah, this is just an addition. It is querendo dizer que a em março teve uma notícia assim que foi assim notícia nacional que as companhias de, de as editoras estava transformando tudo o material digitalizado então o livro didático material didático material pedagógico tudo uh, pronto nos, nos nos instrumentos que os alunos receberam. Então, usando os instrumentos de tecnologia que os alunos receberam, é só clicar que eles vão para o site, vai para o livro e tudo mais. Mas isso aí é apenas assim, é acesso, acesso digital. E nós temos que ainda trabalhar essa nova forma de aprendizagem e consulta para esse material didático. É isso que ele queria acrescentar. Então, eles estão se digitalizando né, o material. Thank you. And the second question, the, uh, what teachers are saying about lesson study in relation to implementation of new curriculum? We have a, a device of national curriculum guideline roughly about every 10 years. So mm -hmm. five years before a new one came, but the 15 years further before new one came and it, all the teacher has been uh, experienced this revision. And then some teachers are saying, uh, next, next <laughs> new national curriculum guide has been just a discussion has been started in the Ministry of Education already. So, oh, again, it comes and then some teachers <laughs> responded to that. But uh, um, some teachers think the teacher is a lifelong learning profession. So they just they, uh, learn what is the key for new uh, curriculum reform and then what we should do and so on and so on. So um, Japanese teachers can uh, be uh, 
just a uh, patient, <laughs> patient learning new one. But uh, I have to say that there was a, a difference among school level. Um, elementary school teachers loves uh, kids, uh, and the junior high school teacher loves um, craft <laughs> sports, and the high school teacher loves mathematics. And so they say, oh, nothing changed, <laughs> even national curriculum, some teachers say. And the university professor loves themselves. So they, <laughs> sorry, I, I was just saying something funny, but uh, um, anyhow, uh, some majority of teachers are moving towards new uh, implementation of new curriculum should be a big deal. It is Con from content-based to competence-based. Uh, this is a big change uh, within the 70 years of history of education in Japan. So uh, that uh, could be a uh, one fast reaction. And uh, through the lesson study, uh, curriculum change should be very specific in the uh, level of classroom. Okay, so the assessment will be aligned to the, this competency-oriented yes. curriculum, right? Yes. So uh, teachers should learn what is assessment upon the, uh, the uh, competency-oriented curriculum. Yes. So this is a challenge. Yes, it's a very yes. huge task for, for yeah. teachers. And actually, uh, the kinds of rubrics for the teacher to use the assessment has been released by the Minister of Education in addition to the uh, national curriculum guidelines. So uh, this is a phase of uh, implemented and then attained curriculum level. So teachers yeah. have been started to uh, coping with this attained curriculum level with assessment. And also assessment should be used for improvement of teaching. So assessment and the teaching could be uh, seamless. The, uh, Two faces of same coin is the uh, conceptualization of the assessment. A conversa está muito boa aqui por causa que eu fiz perguntas muito importantes sobre o que que os professores estão dizendo sobre a implementação desse novo currículo, porque isso nós vivemos aqui no Brasil também. E o que o professor está dizendo que, por exemplo, no caso da tecnologia, está existindo ainda um tempo para os professores acostumarem primeiro com o uso da tecnologia antes de pensar em, em, no conteúdo, no, no currículo baseado em competências. Mas ele falou que os professores experientes no Japão sabem que cada 10 anos eles mudam o currículo. O currículo no Japão vem assim, se desenvolvendo ao longo de, de 70 anos, sempre, a cada 10 anos eles estão, estão mudando. Então, eles sabem que a para professor é uma profissão de vida, de, de toda a vida. Então, eles falam assim, ah, é outra reforma, então vamos estudar, vamos adaptar e vamos entender. Mas ele apontou um certo ponto muito importante, que os professores do ensino fundamental gostam de crianças, amam as crianças. Os professores, das, da, os, a, a, o pessoal do ensino fundamental 2, tem que lidar com os adolescentes que gostam de esportes, gostam de outras coisas além da matemática. Os professores no ensino médio, eles gostam mais do conteúdo mesmo de matemática, sem pensar nem antes nem depois. E os universitários, os professores universitários, é uma dolorosa realidade, ele falou que gostam de si mesmo, certo? Então, eles ensinam a matemática que eles <risos> gostam. Então, assim, percorrer um currículo de matemática para a formação de professores que percorrem esse, todo esse percurso é uma tarefa realmente, assim, muito importante. Então, ele falou que, no momento, para fazer uma boa avaliação, precisa mesmo do documento para o implementado, mas aqueles atingidos, porque senão a avaliação tem que avaliar aquele que os alunos conseguiram. Então, é um caminho que nós estamos percorrendo. Thank you very much, Professor Yoshinori, for your wonderful talk. I'd like to move to, to uh, other questions that are coming, but I'd like to start with a comment that I made uh, about the Professor Baba's talk. Uh, uh, 
the bottom up from the continuous, uh, the role of teachers, the bottom up from the continuous teacher learning and the role of lesson study, I think that it is the highlight of your talk because the importance of a cascade mode. Otherwise, in developing countries in the cultures, if you don't have the teacher training from the cascade mode from the top down, they stop just to, uh, realizing the documents and uh, filling it in the checklists and the documents and so on. They don't develop the, the thinking about the curriculum, the educational uh, recognition, the identity. So uh, I'd like to, to stress on your talk about the mathematical thinking linked to lesson study approach from either top, on, top down or uh, bottom up. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> And uh, it came uh, 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 a question that is for Professor Baba and also for Professor Sh Sh uh, Shimizu, if he says something to do. But there is a question. Gostaria de perguntar aos professores de que forma podemos difundir efetivamente o lesson study no Brasil? She, uh, Michele Barbosa Cardoso, Thanks immensely over your talks and ask uh, Baba and uh, Shimiz about what, in what, which way we could diffuse more effectively lesson study in Brazil. What's uh, your suggestion? Ah, okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, first of all, I want you to realize diffuse uh, more effectively. Um, I, I don't know the context of Brazil, so probably I can't really talk about, uh, you know, the best way to diffuse in Brazil context. But uh, first of all, I want you to realize diffuse contains some kind of, you know, contradiction. In order to diffuse effectively, uh, sometimes we develop some kind of manuals and uh, simply diffusing uh, some of the materials. It's okay, it's easy for us to distribute, but that one only sacrifice the quality of discussion or quality of lesson study. And if we put too much emphasis on quality, uh, sometimes we emphasize a few centers only then we cannot diffuse. So there is a sort of conflict in between. But uh, probably what, from my experience, maybe we can have a, a bit of a different center and uh, not nationwide at the beginning, but several different kind of approaches will be developed around the center and they can exchange. What do you do? in our center? What do we do in your center? What do they do in their center? So that they can see the variation among the approaches. Then we can cons uh, discuss about what is the differences, how that kind of approach uh, is, you know, what kind of things can that approach brings or a shortcoming even. So uh, that kind of things probably is uh, effective, I suppose. So simply diffusing is not really an uh, approach which can be recommended. Is that OK? Wow, thank you very much. You took the point. Pessoal, a resposta do professor Baba é maravilhosa. Ele está querendo dizer que dizer simplesmente essa palavra, difundir efetivamente a lesson study no Brasil, traz alguns conflitos de interpretação. Porque difundir simplesmente, mostrar o que é lesson study, divulgar através de manuais, ou documentos, ou papers, ou artigos, ele falou, para nós educadores, às vezes é fácil, a gente distribui material, mas com essa distribuição de material, para naquele que não é a lesson study, que você para o pensamento, 
Então, fica uma abordagem de cima para baixo, através de manuais e documentos novamente. Ele acha que a palavra, a natureza da variabilidade da lesson study, que leva em conta, com, em, em conta o contexto cultural de cada necessidade local do contexto, né? Ah, faz com que uma sugestão que ele possa ter, porque ele não conhece exatamente o Brasil, para começar com centros, centros regionais ou centros localizados que tenham um objetivo claro de uma forma de lesson study, fiel aos princípios, para trabalhar, para descobrir o que é necessário, o que é importante e comparar com outros centros. Então, são centros de pesquisa em lesson study para apoiar o crescimento, o desenvolvimento do, dos professores, desenvolvimento profissional e também desenvolvimento da de educação matemática como um todo. Porque ele fala que se você começa a estudar documentos e você fica pensando somente na qualidade, aí a essência do conteúdo, por exemplo, fica fora. Se você fica falando somente em competências enquanto conceito abstrato, você não vê como que os próprios professores podem desenvolver ah, o material, e mesmo os pesquisadores. Então, a ideia que ele dá, como nós estamos fazendo no Brasil, eu acho que estamos percebendo que existem centros, universidades, com um grupo de pesquisadores fazendo a sua lesson study, e numa oportunidade como essa do nosso seminário, estamos trocando ideias para entender melhor, aprofundar o nosso entendimento. Ele acha que é dessa maneira é a verdadeira interpretação dessa palavra difundir, não somente de distribuir material e explicar o que é o processo. Thank you very much, Professor Baba. I think that I transmitted your thoughts. That is very nice for us. Thank you. Mr. Sensei, uh, do you want to say anything about the the uh, diffusion? Effective diffusion of lesson study in Brazil. Your suggestion, please. Your words are most welcome. Poderia colocar professor Shimizu na tela, por favor? Yes, thank you. Um, we Japanese uh, living in a such tiny island in the far east, but the big country like Brazil, uh, it could be uh, difficult to have a uh, kinds of a open house lesson studies and so on and so on. But in my uh, view, I could say much more practical, the participants of today, the seminar, could have a some kind of group to share their perspectives and their idea. And the nearby teacher can gather to observe their lesson together and they exchange some ideas. Uh, this could be a starting point for forming a, uh, not like Japanese style, but a Brazilian original style lesson study for improving teaching. And uh, I just reminded uh, when the teaching gap from the Jim Stigler and Hebert book in 1999, a uh, huge impact was in the United States. Uh, they, the book has, and they, like uh, Takahashi Akihiko-san uh, uh, started to work with uh, some uh, place, four, five places to yes. start off. And then it widespread, but of course the, the um, Money, money, and the human resources are needed, but the uh, lesson study is a kind of a bottom-up, grassroots activity by teachers. So I think the uh, teachers here in the seminar could be a key person for <laughs> the future of a new uh, practice in Brazil. Yes. <laughs> for sure, sure. Pessoal, a, a sugestão do professor Shimizu é também é assim, perfeito. Ele acha que, uh, que o Japão é, uma, é um país pequenininho, né? É um país formado de ilhas, enquanto que o Brasil uh, tem um tamanho continental. Então, ele falou que, obviamente, que não pode trazer o que consegue fazer, juntar mil professores de uma vez para fazer aqueles open classes, essas coisas assim, né? As aulas públicas, por exemplo, é quase que impossível aqui no Brasil mas ele acha que os participantes desse nosso seminário podem ser as pessoas chaves 
para criar seus próprios centros nas suas escolas. Por quê? Porque lesson study não é uma coisa, não é um projeto ser imposto de cima para baixo, como o professor Takuyababa falou, de manuais de, de top bottom, né? de, 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 baixo pra, de cima para baixo. Mas sim, atividade que começa com o desenvolvimento profissional do professor dentro da sua própria prática para melhorar. Então, ele acha que um seminário como o nosso, com todas as pessoas trocando ideias e criando o, a, a atividade de lesson study no seu contexto cultural, ele acha que pode ser uma maneira fácil de você uh, divulgar. Ele lembra que eu também uso bastante o Stigler Hibbert, The Teaching Gap, né? o livro que deu, causou muito impacto nos Estados Unidos, e com o trabalho da Catherine Lewis, e também do professor Akihiko Takahashi, que ele começou a implantar, implantar né? Quer dizer, divulgar a lesson study em vários lugares, não como um projeto geral assim, de difusão, mas nos lugares onde podia fazer lesson study. Alguns dão certo, alguns não dão, mas alguns não é que não dão, vão mais devagar, mas em cada centro, começar pelo trabalho dos professores, porque ele diz que as pessoas chaves, os protagonistas centrais são os professores como protagonista da mudança desse paradigma, certo? Da melhoria da sala de aula. I think that I could transmit your suggestion beautifully <laughs> to the audience, because uh, your suggestions, Baba Sensei and Shimizu Sensei, was perfect for our wish to diffuse the, the effectively the lesson study in Brazil. So, is there any other question? Tem mais alguma pergunta que alguém queira fazer? Eu acho que nós já ganhamos muito, muito com o professor Shimizu e o professor Baba. E eu acho que o seminário ainda continua, depois nós podemos continuar nas rodas de conversa e troca de ideias, mas se as pessoas não tiverem mais outras perguntas, eu posso agradecer os professores e encerrar essa, essa mesa que para mim foi maravilhosa. O que, que vocês acham? I think that nobody came with other questions. So I am calling our, my colleagues and the audience to continue this conversation with some such good information that we had from Professor Baba and Shimizu. So I thank you very much this wonderful round table that we had. And I invite other people to continue in the, our program, a scientific program. Thank you very much. Dom, arigatou gozaimashita. Honto ni koue deshita. Kokoro kara kanshi itashimasu. Arigatou gozaimasu. Obrigado. Obrigado. Muito, muito obrigado. From the heart. Thank you very much.